Okay, the first pattern that we're going to do today, um, this, the legendary squala. Um, early spring on our west slope drainages, Red Root River primarily, Coeur d'Alene River, a lot, there's, there's a stonefly. It's, a, it's a, about a size 8 or size 10 black and olive stonefly. Hmm. Through, the, through the last 15 years, the bitterroot has become famous. If you're talking about it, it's, squala is the pattern. For years, we've we've tied a lot of black stimulators, a lot of that that type of stuff. This is a foam pattern that mm. we've we've worked on. Very very simplistic to tie. It's using a lot of the new materials, and the the number one thing when I'm going through, I, we do a lot of drift boat fishing. So um, I was a traditionalist with a lot of years where I would tie just with synthetic yep. materials. When foam started coming out, um, we started using more and more foam. What I like about it is they're high high riding, really easy to see, and they're a tool for me. So yeah. we're trying to match the bug that's coming off, but we're also trying to get the right silhouette, something that the angler can see as well. So foam is becoming more and more accepted but in the community? Very much so. There's all sorts of, again, James Bond top seeker patterns that come <laughs> out with foam, and I, I love foam. Drift boat fishing, I'm not, I'm not pulling my fly in for my client drying it off and sure. going. Right. It's, uh, more time on the water, more, and that that's it flies the on the water, more that's, fish. That's, that's the right. key to doing it. Um, pattern that we're going to do today, really simplistic. I, I love Dairiki 280. I'm gonna, we're going to use the size 10. This is a light wire hopper hook, it's 2x long. Um, you can use like a 9672 Mustad or a 5263, any 2 or 3x long, kind of medium or light wire, okay. wire pattern. Um, I'm gonna place it in my vise like that. Okay, and this is kinda cool because it's got a nice little bend sure, to yeah, it. Yeah. You know, a standard shank hook will work work just, just as fine too. This gives that that little buggy, that pad, a little buggy on, yeah. on the thing. Um, I'm gonna take my bobbin, and I'm tying with 3X here. Yeah, I love Unithread. Unithread's become just a absolute great filament to tie with. Um, so we're gonna, if you take your hook and you look at it here, this is the, the, the two-thirds point. That's where I, I'm going to start this pattern in. So I'm going to tie, tie a jam knot in, and I'm going to run a base of thread all the way back to the bend of the hook. Just come on in and cut it off. So you got your base in. Next thing is there's been all sorts of club sandwiches, Chernobyls, all sorts of right. types of things where they took a sheet foam, okay, standard yep. sheet foam, comes in a bunch of different colors. This is actually two-millimeter foam. Um, bunch of different manufacturers do it, utilize it, and then they would um, use it, marry it together in order to get color combinations. What we found is an old, old product that that is kind of been resurrected again, and that's furry foam. Okay, furry foam. Frank Johnson uh, from Streamside Anglers back in the 70s did furry foam. Did a whole bunch of woven stone fly patterns, real realistic stuff. Um, we're now taking the the, the foam itself, the furry foam, and we're laminating it together. Now, wow. what that happens, what happens is, is you can take your olive for your kind of squalor pattern, and then you can actually separate this in using, you know, 3M's Super 77 or some other type of material. You can take, it's a great adhesive, you just spray the light exactly. on, you set it aside for 30, 40 seconds, you can either use the full width of the furry foam or you can actually pull it apart. Part. This is actually a thermal blanket, just dyed different colors. Huh. This comes in maybe 15, 20 different, different colors. You can then spray the back end of that, laminate it together, and it sticks. And then that gives wow. you your foam sheet, plus it gives you nice furnace. So a lot of the foam patterns, they're, they're sandwiched together with, with foam on foam. So the combination that I have here is an olive furry foam laminated to that that uh, that sheet foam. Um, I can I come in with my scissors and I cut about an eighth inch sheet, eight inch strain. Okay, so I work off this when I'm commercially tying. I'm running through, running through, running through, and doing multiples. Yep. Typically, what I do is I come in and I cut just at an angle, a point. So the, the squall itself has a stonefly type tail or tail coming off, and then it's got usually got a clump of eggs on the bottom end. The the 
the um, the females actually have the egg clumps that they're dumping ovipositing. Yeah. So the stonefly is uh, aquatic invertebrate. When they come off in the spring, they'll start migrating into the shore. They'll crawl up onto the bushes. The nymph will sit there and it'll break out to this uh, gargantuan size thing. We're going to do a, a salmon fly in a little bit. And that's, the, that's the bigger cousin of, of sure. the squala. Again, I take this, I set it in right in tight with my bevel at the back. And I take my compression thread and I just suck it in tight. Okay, so I've got my nice rounded yep. foam configuration. Then I'm going to just move it right on forward and I'm going to compress about four sections coming forward. Because if you look at those, 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 they've got real defined yeah, is that thorax? segmentation. I, I can't remember what it's called, uh, but it's the abdomen. Yeah, that'd be the abdomen, and then you're getting up, up to the thorax. When I get here, I'm back to that two-thirds point. So when you look at it, now I've got a nice furry, foamy oh, yeah, great. pattern right, right on yeah. through. Now, um, we're going to take some deer hair now. And you can get really nice. This is kind of spinning deer hair with nice tips on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is fairly compressible type, type of stuff. I've gone through and I've used um, over cutters with wings. I've used... Um, uh, bucktail for a wing. I've, I've spun clipped heads, everything else. What I do with this is I'm going to come in and cut a clump about the diameter of a pencil. Now when you're working with hair, here's, there's a couple of tips to work with hair, but I usually grab a hold of the very, very tips of it and I get rid of all of the under fluff like that. Hmm. I love using, they make little, little um, combs, huh? combs and it actually gets the extra under, under flow. That'll actually help with your flotation over time too. Any of that duff that's in there grabs onto water and makes the fly heavier. That's great. We're gonna put it tips down into my hair stacker, tack it in, and then pull it on out. And a hair stacker will even your tips right, right on forward like that. Now, to make this simplistic, it's a lot like tying a Latorte hopper. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna measure my tips to the back right here, and I'm gonna grab a hold of it with this hand right here. Okay, measure mm -hmm. it on in, and I pre-cut about a quarter of an inch in front of my measured amount. Now, if you set that in there and you, you spun it in, you have to come in and chase your fibers later. Yeah. So what I do is I hold it in into place right there like that, and I reach right in, I take one wrap around, two wraps around, three wraps around, and I suck it tight. Oh, That's gonna, like that. Okay, it just saves on... And it's sucked up nice and tight like that. I'm going to release like that. Look at that. Wow. All ready, all ready to go. That's amazing. Now, the next thing, rubber legs have become really, really big. They're, the, I've gone through square rubber, round rubber. Now they have the barred rubber. I, I absolutely dig the, the barred, barred rubber. You can get them from a bunch of different manufacturers. Hairlines got them, and they do them about seven or eight different colors. I've got some olive down here. Okay. okay. So... As I take my olive here like this, I'll take one section of that olive barred leg, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you set it right in, don't worry too much about the length, but I'm going to set it right in like that, and I'm going to put one, two control wraps in like that. Okay. Cut it off. Reach right over like this. One, two control wraps over, and then I suck it down tight like that. Okay? Now, this is... I take my foam and I lift my foam up out of the way and it's going to give you a gap towards the front. So we're just going to lay a thread base down there. And I don't like to crowd the head too close on these because it makes it a hell of a lot easier to get into it. So I suck that on tight, reach in, and just half hitch off. Okay? Yeah. Now your cleanup goes from there. You're going to cut your bobbin off. Okay, you're going to redirect this. Move. You can move your your rubber legs into position, like this, and then I reach right off in front and I cut it right off blunt, just like that. Okay. Okay. Now from there, I'm going to cut, cut, cut. Okay. Make sure you got all of your hair up out of the way, like that. Yeah. Okay, and that's going to give you your squall up pattern.